Reptilians. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is long overdue. Today we are finally upgrading Zaz's tank. So she has been in a 36 by 18 by 24 tank and that was fine for a while but lately she has become so much more active if you guys have followed me for a little while you know that she was super inactive she had to have surgery maybe two years ago now like it's been a while and she slowly has been regaining her activity levels and it has taken a very long time it has been a very long journey and finally she is back to her normal active self especially because she just went through kind of brumation she doesn't really brumate she just kind of lazes around and doesn't want to eat and she never actually goes into full brumation but we are through all that and she is finally back to her active self i felt like it was only right to upgrade her tank and give her so much more space so i had actually posted it on twitter for those of you that follow me there i had found a jewelry cabinet at the Habitat for Humanity Restore here. So I had seen these jewelry cabinets a lot at the Restore and I had wanted to get one for a little while and for some reason I never did and then I'd always go back to get them and they would always be gone. So finally we bought one and it comes out to a little over 90 gallons. It is a four foot long tank. We are finally upgrading that tank today. So first of all this was our concept drawing for what we wanted to do and I think we actually came pretty close to that. So this is a jewelry cabinet that you would find like in a store and the first thing I wanted to do was get that top glass off to allow for better ventilation. I was struggling with that so we had to do that a different day but this did have wooden doors in the back that I immediately took off and there was actually a light fixture on the inside that we had to replace because the light bulb was too small to fit in there. And then here we are a few days later with me outside in my pajamas again. My dad actually had to come and get the glass off because we were afraid that it was going to shatter into a million pieces. So he ended up using a heat gun to melt the silicone that was sealing it in. And then he also went ahead and cut the plexiglass for us that would become the plexiglass doors. And also for the doors, my dad made these wooden frames because plexiglass is expensive, especially when you start to add just a half an inch to an already predetermined size. So he made frames so that the plexiglass doors would properly fit into the tracks of the jewelry cabinet and here I'm just painting those black. Next I'm just going to use some of this all-purpose glue to glue those frames to the plexiglass. This is where I messed up terribly and I took the entire protector off of the plexiglass which would ultimately result in me ruining this door. The appropriate way for me to do this would have been to peel only back a little bit of that plastic, glue this on, let everything dry, and then peel back the rest of the plastic when everything was done. But in a minute, we are gonna see how I destroyed my door with glue. Dang it. And there it is. That was the moment that glue skidded across my plexiglass door and that glue is still there right now. And here we are a few weeks later doing the other door the way that it should have been done in the first place. Next up is the background. I had someone ask me if I could show you exactly how I print my backgrounds at Walmart. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We go to walmart.com, we go to the photo center, you go to poster, it doesn't take you to poster. So you click posters again, and then we're gonna click the two by eight banner for this this one, if you were doing a 40 gallon breeder, you would do the two by six banner. And then we're gonna select this full photo. We're just gonna click on create now, and then we're gonna upload our picture to this little banner thing. Every picture I've ever uploaded has said it's gonna be low quality, I'm assuming because it's just such a large banner, but just make sure that whatever picture you choose is a super high definition picture. This is not even the picture I ended up using, but I already had the screen recording, so. And then I always just do same day pickup and it's ready in like an hour. And then we just start putting in that background. I like to just throw it in there first. So that way, instead of trying to measure everything out, I can just kind of bend it and make marks where I need to cut it. And it just makes this whole step a little faster. And then I'm just cutting out each individual panel and then we're gonna take it outside and spray Mod Podge on it. Normally I would use the liquid Mod Podge, but the spray Mod Podge is so much faster and more convenient. What this does is it basically seals in that picture so that if any food debris or anything gets on it you can just wipe it off and it also prevents so much glare from the lights. 
Next, we're gonna take some of that liquid Mod Podge I was talking about, and that's what we're gonna use to glue this to the glass. And this Mod Podge does take a while to dry, so what I'm gonna do is use hot glue for the edges of this just to hold it in place while the Mod Podge dries. And that's it, that's our background. Ignore the tile, we haven't got to that yet. Next, I am using painter's tape to tape off the metal because we are gonna paint this black. Everything in my living room is black and gray, so this needed to fit in as well. And at first I went to paint this and I did not sand it because I thought the paint would just kind of stick and it didn't and I failed. As you can see that bubbling there, it was not sticking at all. So I ended up having to just wipe everything off and sand it down and then try again. And then I think it took like three or four coats of paint to cover this. Then a few days later, my dad came over. He had actually built the drawer, so he came over to bring those and install them. He also did the screen top and everything. Basically anything that had to do with construction, my dad did it. Next, we are going to hot glue these tiles down in order to grout them. This is me pretending that I'm going to pop these tiles up and then getting scared that I was going to break them. So I need to hot glue the tiles down so when we grout it, they stay in place. I absolutely love the tiles for Bearded Dragons. It helps keep their nails down and all that. But when she goes poop in her tank, it would get all down between the tiles and it was super gross. So we are grouting them. So that way it just makes cleanup easier. Next was the most fun part of this whole thing and that was building her hide. This is something that we've been looking into for a while and something we've wanted to do for a really long time just to give her a bigger hiding space. We are doing this out of styrofoam and grout. So the first thing that we're doing is just cutting out a bunch of pieces of styrofoam that kind of look like rock and we're hot gluing it all together and getting the general shape that we want. And after that hide was done, we also built a few floating islands, but we only ended up using one of those, so all the rest will be saved for a future project. Also, using a handsaw for this makes an absolute mess. I highly suggest if you have a hot wire to use a hot wire because the mess that this made was insane. And then once that was done, we started grouting it. We used a pre-mixed grout, but I highly suggest that if you're doing this, you buy the bag of grout and mix it thin for the first layer, and then for the second layer, you can mix it thicker to give it the rocky appearance, but using a premix grout kind of makes things difficult because it's already super thick and trying to get it to just stick like that to the styrofoam causes a bit of a problem. And once I put two layers of grout on everything, I started to paint it. I had no idea what I was doing, so I was just kind of mixing yellows and whites and oranges and using a dry paintbrush, kind of like I did in the hide for the blue tongue skink. I just kind of scrape over the grout and where there is high areas of the grout it'll pick up that paint and look kind of like a rock and for this i'm just using regular old acrylic craft paint the next step was finding something to secure her basking platform. So I went to Hobby Lobby and found this really cool looking stick and I just screwed that into the basking platform and then I siliconed the stick itself to the ground. So it's a solid platform. It's actually sitting up against the back of the tank. The base of the basking platform is also siliconed to the ground. So everything is super sturdy. And instead of just having the one stick there, we went ahead and chopped up the rest of that stick to put around it to look more decorative. And as for the floating platform, we wanted that to be silicone directly to the glass and not to the paper because if it was going to rip down and it was on paper, it would have ripped the whole entire thing down. So we cut out the paper to where it'd be sitting on the glass and I went ahead and left that one stick under there. I had originally put that there just for drying time, but I left it there because I thought it looked kind of nice and it's just more support for that platform. Her UVB light is actually mounted on the inside of this tank using these metal brackets that we bent to fit the light. It is a 36 inch Repti Sun 10.0 and the heat lamp sits on top of this screen lid that I mentioned before. This lid is what replaced the glass that was there and it's made out of a wood frame bonded to a metal screen. And that's it. I put her in there and she just kind of laid there. She wasn't amused at all. As I'm recording this voiceover, it is the next day and she has been nonstop exploring and climbing. So I guess she likes it, but that's it. That's the finished product. I do plan on putting a bubbler in her water dish so that she can hopefully see and drink out of her water bowl because as of right now, she does not use a water bowl. And I also plan on putting handles on the glass doors, but honestly, I lost them. I plan on doing that eventually.
And that's it guys, that is her new tank. I am beyond excited because she has so much more space now and I absolutely love the way it came out. I've wanted to do this for a very long time but she is literally just now at a point where she is back to her old self, 100%. I know when I did the surgery video story time, I talked about her being mostly back to her normal self and she is back to her spicy attitude ridden self now. <laughs> Don't forget to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every time I put on a video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. Thank you so much to Drax Attack and Hades for the ladies, which made me laugh so much when I saw that this was a tortoise's account. Thank you guys so much for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of stuff. You guys are the bee's knees. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.